Hi, I'm Eric Saltwell, Program Manager for Blend for Visual Studio, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about how to make it easy and quick to edit and create um, HTML5 Windows 8 apps using Blend for Visual Studio. You may be familiar with Blend from previous versions of Expression Blend, where we were primarily a XAML editing tool. Well, we're very excited to talk about the fact that now, with this release, with Windows 8, we've also introduced support for editing um, Windows 8 HTML5 CSS3 JavaScript applications. We're very excited about this release, and we believe that it's going to do a great job at making you very, very productive at editing the user interface of your HTML5 applications, while still leaving you full in control of your markup. So let's get started. All right. First, I want to show you an application that we're going to build today. It's called Swagwatch. And before I get started in editing it, I'm going to just take a little lap around Blend to show you some of the big pieces. Here we have the Styles Rule pane. This is a place where you come in order to edit and look at the style sheets, the style blocks, all the CSS content in your application. Notice here there's a little gold bar that's called the insertion point. And that's the place where Blend by default puts new style rules that we create on your behalf. Down here we have the live DOM tree and this shows you all the markup elements in your page, the DOM elements. Over here we have both an HTML attributes pane and the CSS properties pane. The CSS properties pane is a place you'll come to do most of your CSS editing when you're in Blend and it consists of two pieces. At the top is the applied styles list. This contains all the rules in cascade order, um, all the style rules that are being applied to your element. Below that is a place where you can edit all the properties of your currently selected CSS rule, and you can select it either in the applied styles list or over here in the styles pane. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to come over and take a look at a very early version of this application, and we're going to do some styling of this text. CSS styling is one of the most common things that you will do in Blend, and it's one of the most common activities you do when you're creating user interfaces using CSS and HTML. And we looked at what people tend to commonly do when they are working in CSS, and it's very often a combination of procedures that I'll call here the styling loop. And that is very typically go in and add an ID or class to an element, create a new style rule, edit the selector of that style rule to apply to the element you just created, and then go and set properties. And this loop, this edit your markup, create a rule, edit a selector, set properties, it's something that you do again and again and again. And we want to make this very, very productive for you. And I'm going to show you how to do that in Blend today. So I have here two spans. I'm going to come in. I'm going to select these two spans. I'm going to say edit class name. I'm going to give it a class name of app name text, and I'm going to say create a style rule, which it will create right at the insertion point. I hit OK. It creates it. Now we can go in and we can edit the text. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to edit the font size. Great. OK. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit the color. You can either use a color picker. You can set RGBA values directly. In my case, because I want a color that really well matches the logo, I'm going to use our color picker, pick out a color from the logo, and there you go. Look at how simple that was. Look at how few keystrokes you used. Let me show you that again so you can really, really get a sense for how simple it is. In this case, I'm going to make an ID-based rule. If I slow click in the live DOM, it lets me edit the ID of the current element. I'm going to call it watch text. I come in, then I right click, and I say edit create style rule. I say create style rule from existing element ID. It creates it at the insertion point, and I'm ready to edit away. In this case, I'm going to go in and I'm going to set the font weight to bold. I'm going to pick a contrasting color from that same logo, and there we go. So that's styling with Blend. We believe that this is a really, really powerful collection of features that help you to be very, very productive, but still leaving you in control of the style rules that you created, the selectors. And Blend doesn't just allow you to edit class name based rules and ID based rules. I can go into Blend and I can directly say, create new style rule. I can just type in the selector. Notice that we give you IntelliSense for the selector, really leaving you in control of your application. All right, so now let's move from styling to talk a little bit about layout. You know, 
CSS3 has provided a ton of new features that make it much easier for you to create application layouts in CSS. If it's Flexbox, if it's the new grid layout, these are tools that are going to make it a lot simpler for you to create layouts. The days of the float are kind of behind us now, hopefully. And I want to show you some of the tools in Blend that's going to make editing of these very, very easy. So you can see here I have mostly the same app. I have wrapped the image and the text. I've wrapped them into a div. And I've created a style rule for that div. I can see that when I look at the applied styles list for the element. And if I click on that rule, um, I can take a look at its properties. Clearly, there's a lot of CSS properties. So if I only want to see the ones that are currently set in the rule to get a quick overview, I tell Blend to view set properties only. And here you see that it's got a display of MS Grid. This is the new proposed CSS3 standard for Grid. It allows you to create table-based layouts, but without messing with your semantic markup. The way that you do that is that you set the columns and rows in CSS, not by adding new TDs and TRs in markup. And you can see here where I've declared these properties. But it's a little hard to get a sense for what's going on with this grid from just looking at the properties. And so we visualize on Blend's design surface these same rows and columns. And not only do we allow you to do we visualize them for you, we also allow you to edit them. Not only can I edit them, I can create new rows, I can create new columns. We really have a full featured on design surface editor for your grid. You want to use absolute positioning, we support that. You want to use relative positioning, we support that. We always leave you in control. It's just a more productive control. All right, so that's layout. Let's move a little bit to talking about controls. Controls is really an area where HTML has taken a step up with Windows 8. Windows 8 ships with a very powerful library of controls that are supported in both the XAML and the JavaScript platforms. And Blend wanted to make sure that we had really great support for these controls. And we do. You can see here that I've created a list view in your application. And you can see that it's bound to an array of JavaScript objects, each of which is a shirt. We show you each of those elements, and we allow you to edit it. Now, of course, Blend supports setting properties for this control, but we really go much deeper in letting you not just set properties, but really work with the control in a very rich and intuitive way. Let's say I wanted to edit the template that we show for each of these JavaScript objects. The way that I do that is I just select the template, and I go in and I start editing content. You can see that the template right now just has this one little shirt span. And if I delete it, it deletes it for all of them. If I want to add content, let's say we want to add an image, which is exactly what we want to do. I can go in, select the image, drag it in, and there we go. Now, we have two problems I'm going to fix. First, this image is not the right size. And second of all, we just are using some standard placeholder image when we'd like to bind the URL of the image to a property coming from the underlying JavaScript data. So first, let's fix the size. I have here the template. And you can see that I've applied an inline style to the template of 260 picks height and width. I'd like to move that out of the template and instead put that size on the image itself. This is something that Blend does very well. We call it CSS refactoring. And this moving of CSS properties around is something that you do all the time. And we wanted to make it very simple, very easy. So you can see this category has on it this white box. We call this the property marker. If I click in here, I can choose to cut, copy, paste, or clear properties. I'm going to choose cut in this case. When I do, the template shrink down in size. Now I'm going to click on the image itself. I'm going to say, let's make, make a new rule. I'm going to create it from using a class name of shirt image. Now I can click on that rule, and I can say paste properties. You can cut, copy, and paste properties for individual properties, categories of properties, or whole rules themselves. This is really a great way to be productive in Blend. Now that I've resized, let me go in and let me strip out this placeholder image. We actually have a collection of images in here already shipping with the app. I could pick to set one, but we don't want to do that. We'd really like to data bind to the underlying JavaScript data. Each JavaScript object in my array has a property called shirt. When I tell Blend to bind to that property, you can see all the shirts become different. Blend puts a gold border around this property to tell you that it's been data bound. Now let's do some data binding against CSS. I'm going to go to the same rule we created earlier. And in this case, I'm going to add a property called background color. 
when I create it. I could set it directly, but of course what we want to do here is we actually want to data bind it. I'll say data bind to the underlying color property of the JavaScript object. Now we've got color for our app. So that's working with controls. Clearly we work with more controls than just the list view, but I really wanted to show you and give you a sense of the deep support we have for these controls. We've talked about styling, layout, controls. I want to cover just one last thing in Expression Blend. And that's about our design surface. The, the picture that we show you of your running app, it comes from us actually running your app under the covers. This is important because first of all, it allows us to support running JavaScript on our design surface. But also, due to the fact that we run the same runtime for our design surface that your users use when they run the app, you can feel very confident that the app that you see in our design surface is the app that your customers will see. Now, that's important and good, but of course we don't just run the app on the design surface because if we did that, then every time you clicked on a link or something with a click property, you would actually be clicking inside the app. That's not what you want in Blend. Typically you want click to mean select something so I can edit or design it. But what if I have some content, a flyout, a pop-up, that isn't immediately available when the app launches? You've got to interact with the app, click on something. How would you do that? Well, in Blend, like I said, we run your app under the covers. And because we run it, we can just put Blend in an alternate mode. And I'll show you with this other page over here where I have running JavaScript. And this is called interactive mode. When I click on interactive mode, it brings up the app. I can now fully interact with it. If I click on it, you can see that we have some alternate content come up. Now I can come out of interactive mode. I can click on content. I can use all the same design tools that I've been using in order to style this new content. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me today. Clearly, I've only had time to scratch the surface of our support for HTML5 and CSS3 in Blend. If you'd like to learn more, then you can head over to the Blend Insiders blog where we have a ton of new content about using Blend for Visual Studio in order to create and edit HTML5 CSS3 apps. Thank you very much.